What a privilege to be here and to preach God's Word. And I'm going to preach this morning on Proverbs 22, verse 4. The reward of humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And I just love it how rich the Bible is, how rich God's Word is. That that one sentence, there's so much there. But I'm going to start with the fear of the Lord. Because I feel like this is a topic that's been on my heart for many, many months. And I think we all understand, we all know what's the fear of the Lord, is to stand in reverence of Him, to stand in awe of Him, to honor Him, to respect Him. But you know, in the Bible, there's at least, the word fear is at least 300 times in the Bible in reference to God. And it's been just on my heart that I need to scratch a bit deeper. There, there might be more depth than my understanding of what is the fear of God. So I must say, I feel very small speaking about this topic. So God help me. When I was in my late 20s, I remember I went to a, um, a Michael Jackson show. Live Mac Michael Jackson. Look, I grew up in the 80s. I loved him. <laughs> So we went, he, um, he was at the Gre uh, Greenpoint Stadium in Cape Town, and I remember looking at the crowd, and everybody went absolutely crazy. And there was a young girl next to me, and she was about to faint. She had a joyous trembling about her, like a fearful, respectful trembling because she's so close to her hero, so close to Michael, and she was crying. And I was looking at this thinking, this is idolatry. And how I long for a people, to be part of a people that can be like this before our Lord, before our King, our Savior. He deserves all our worship, all our praise, all our honor, all our awe, all our respect, just because of who he is. But here's the question, do we know him? Do we know all of him? Do we know the Old Testament God and the New Testament God? Because then we fear him in the right way. But first of all, we need a biblical balanced view of who God is. That is most important. Because when you emphasize one of his attributes, like love, we get a skewed view of him. We see him as meek and lovish, sugary kind of God that only wants to love and bless us. But on the other hand, if we view or we emphasize only his justice and we only see his justice, we will be too scared and too afraid to draw close to him. Or we can compare him to our earthly dads and we view him like that, thinking that he's like our dads and our view is just skew. That's why a biblical view, an overall biblical view of God is just so important. Proverbs 1 verse 7 reads, The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Solomon understood the need to express the importance of character before explaining the fear of God. And if you look at the Old Testament, let's go back to the Old Testament. He, God was inaccessible. You couldn't just come into his presence. You just couldn't. He was too holy. He was too pure. He was, too, he was just too majestic. So you couldn't just come into his presence. He is a God to be feared. His very, bring, his very being brings about a trembling. And then we read in the Old Testament, uh, the tabernacle. The tabernacle was divided into three sections. You had the outer courts, and then you had the holy place, and then you had the holy of holies. And in the holy place, it was only the priests were allowed there. But in the holy of holies, that's where the Ark of the Covenant was, and that was God's presence. And only the high priest was allowed into this small area once a year and with blood offerings for his own sins and for the sin of the people. And you couldn't go close to the ark, you will drop dead. God was too holy, he was too pure. And so you couldn't draw near to God's presence without appropriate preparations. He was inaccessible. We see in 1 Chronicles 13, we, I don't know, you should, I'm sure you've heard about the story of Uzzah, who dropped dead when he touched the ark of the covenant. 
it was oxen that pulled the cart, but the cart stumbled and he tried to hold onto it and he just dropped dead because it was in direct violation of God's law. You're not allowed to touch the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence. He is just too powerful and too holy and too majestic. We see in Joshua 3, when the Israelites wanted to cross the Jordan, the priest that was allowed to carry the, the Ark of the Covenant, when their feet touched the water, the water parted. Such power. Their feet touched the water because they were holding onto the, um, the Ark. And it says... It actually reads, the water parted and the water stood and rose up in a heap very far away. Can you imagine the water being obedient to God's presence and it just moved away and it stood up in a heap? How powerful is his presence? We see how Moses meets with God every time he went up, we went up Mount Sinai. And on the third day, the whole mountain was covered in smoke. Because God descended on the mountain in fire. And Exodus 19 reads, The smoke billowed, billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. And the whole mountain trembled violently as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. The Israelites didn't even want to go close to the mountain because his glory was too great. They were too scared. That's why Moses was so angry when he came down the mountain the first time when he spent 40 days and 40 nights on top of the mountain. He came down and he saw they were busy with idolatry. He was so angry with them because he, he knew God. He knew God's ways. And he understood the fear of God. And then you see Noah building an ark in holy fear for 120 years. No fear of man, just in fear of God and being obedient in his presence. And then Abraham developed a genuine fear of God by following and obeying the Lord. And in Genesis 15, we see how he obeyed God by wanting to sacrifice his own son. But God stopped him in time. And God said, the Lord said to Abraham, now I know that you fear God. Imagine having that fear and reverence for God and obeying him to that extent where you're willing to go sacrifice your son. You see, fear leads to complete trust in God. Abraham and Isaac's story is not only a demonstration of living under the fear of God, but it's also an incredible picture of the sacrifice of um, the Son of God because God did sacrifice his son so that we can have direct access to him. When Jesus died on the cross, that veil to the Holy of Holies where only the high priest could enter, that veil was torn. Now we've got direct access to God. How beautiful is that? Jesus made it possible. He breached this incredible divide between us and God because God is just so holy and sinless and blameless and we fall so short. But now here's the story. We don't move into God's presence forgetting who he is. We are moved into his presence with a full knowledge of these Old Testament realities. He is still the same God. He is the same God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But because of what Jesus did, we can have access to him. And Jesus gave us a clean slate. And now God can see us through Jesus. That's blameless. So now there's a new dimension to this reverence, fear of God. There's a gratitude. There's a deep, deep gratitude because Jesus made it possible now we can experience him, we can know him, and we can have fellowship with him. And so this magnificent reality brings us to humility. But can you see it goes hand in hand? To stand in the fear of the Lord, it just brings humility. You're humble because of two things. We are humble because we are in the presence of greatness. We are in the presence of cosmic, majestic greatness. And we are humble because we didn't get ourselves into that position. 
Jesus did it. He did it all. We've got nothing to boast about. So let's go back to the first one, being in the presence of greatness. Have any of you ever been in someone great? Someone you look up to? Someone you respect? Someone you honor? Just take a second and think of someone that you would love to have a lunch date with, but that's inaccessible. You don't have access to that person, but you would love to just have a lunch date with this person. Maybe it's somebody famous, maybe it's a political leader, maybe it's a president, a queen, a, somebody that's pioneering in his field. Just think of anyone right now. And now a date has been secured. In a month from now, you are going to meet this person and you're going to have a lunch date. What will go through you? What, what, will, what excitement will build up? Maybe counting the days, wondering what you're going to wear, maybe reading up on this person to know what questions you're going to ask, um, maybe a nervousness, uh, a fearful experience because you're going to meet this person, your hero. But you know what? With God, you don't have to secure a date. <laughs> He is right there all the time, and he is waiting for you to knock. He is waiting for you to come to him so that he can give you access. He is waiting for you to meet with him. He is so jealous for us. He so intimately wants to be close to us, and he wants to meet with us as often as possible. So then we get to the second one. We are humble because we're not getting ourselves into this position so I want to read you a story um, that I actually read in this week. During the Am American Civil War, as a result of a family tragedy, a soldier was granted permission to seek a hearing from the president. He wanted to request exemption from military service. However, when he arrived at the White House, he was refused entry and sent away. He went and sat in a nearby park. A young boy came across him and remarked how un unhappy he looked. The soldier found himself telling the young boy everything. Eventually, the boy said, come with me. Um, he led the dejected soldier back to the White House. They went around the back. None of the guards stopped them. Even the generals and high-ranking government officials stood to attention and let them pass through. The soldier was amazed. Finally, they came to the presidential office. Without knocking, the young boy opened the door and walked straight in. Abram Lincoln, standing there, turned from his conversation with the Secretary of State and said, What can I do for you, Tad? Tad said, Dad, the soldier needs to talk to you. Isn't it a beautiful picture of what Jesus did for us? Jesus got us into that position so that we can talk to our Father. We've got nothing to boast about. It's not us. We did nothing. It is Jesus. He made it possible. So it just leaves us with humil humility and a gratitude, and it actually is just l linked to worship and praise. It still blows my mind away that this powerful God that we've heard is an all-consuming fire if we know who he is. This powerful God that can create just by speaking a word, or he can destroy by speaking a word. This powerful God, this creator, yet he went to this, this extent to send his son so that we can have access to him. He's so desperate for us so that we can meet with him. We can only worship him. And then as if this is not enough, I mean, when you go back to, this, to Proverbs 22, to the scripture, as if that is not enough, just to stand in fear of him, in humility, it, it could actually just stop there, because it's enough. But then as God would, there's a reward. You know, the fearing, fearing God in humility is good for us. You can see it all over scripture. You see it especially in Psalms and Proverbs. There's just in Psalms, you'll hear the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. The Lord shown compassion to those who fear him. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. You see there's a reward, riches, honor, and life. But it's not how we see or the world see riches, honor, and life. It's how God sees it. 
rich in our salvation, his blessings, wisdom, knowledge, to have fellowship with him, but rich in peace. Because peace is not just a feeling, peace is a person. Then the presence of peace means the absence of fear. You know, there's the extraordinary fear of God allows other fears to leave. That's why the Bible says perfect love's Perfect love casts out fear. And it's no coincidence that as the fear and reverence of God decreases in society, in our schools, in our homes, other fears are on the increase. We now have abnormal fears for food, (laughs) for um, uh, fear of man, fear of identity, fear of authority. It's like the worldly fears, other fears are on the increase because the nation, there's no fear of God in the nation anymore. We don't stand in front of our Lord and Savior and tremble because of his greatness anymore. And now other fears are on the increase. But as we spend more time with our Father and our reverence and awe grow in him, our anxiety and terror over worldly concerns diminish us, and it should fade under our growing trust in God's provision and wisdom. And then honor. God bless us with honor because the honor of knowing him, the honor of to be his child, to be called his child, the honor to bring him honor and glory. And then there's also the future honor that he promises. And then there's life. I mean, we are spiritually alive, but there's also an abandoned life here. Proverbs 19 verse 23 reads, The fear of the Lord leads to life, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. That doesn't mean we will never face trouble. We know that. But it means that we won't be consumed with trouble. Aidan always uses the word that trouble won't have its claws in us. But we also get to live this life with confidence, with a boldness, with no insecurities. Humility doesn't, it's not a weakness. It is a strength. It is a God restraint, knowing not who we are, but whose we are. So we also have a stronger ability to resist um, temptation and sin because we live now under the fear of God. It saves us from caving in to our own sinful nature. And that is good for us. So we have an abundant life to live here and a future eternal life in His presence. How great is that reward to live under his fear in humility. And my prayer for us all is that we would be a people characterized by humility and a deep reverence for our God. And I pray that as a people, we we will grow together in this um, as we get to know him more. Amen. Amen.